a very good afternoon everyone welcome you all in this uh, nptel online discussion class i am madhuri vattacharya a prime minister research fellow doing research in inorganic chemistry in iit madras under dr karthik chandra mandal so uh, one uh, as per one of the pmrf deliverables i am taking this uh, weekly discussion classes uh, on uh, this course industrial inorganic chemistry which has been taught by professor debashish rai department of chemistry indian institute of technology kharagpur so these are my details and you can contact me over my email ids for any clarification and your queries so the course outline has been provided in the nptel website uh, so far we have discussed regarding uh, nitrogen compounds phosphorus compounds some peroxide compounds fertilizer like ammonium nitrate urea and phosphorus containing fertilizers also today we'll be discussing regarding sulfur and its compounds and then later on uh, in in the upcoming classes we'll discuss the other topics like halogen compounds iodine compounds then some uh, metallic compounds alkaline earth material metal compounds and then some organo silicon compounds zeolite so and uh, so and so far okay so uh, today we'll be discussing regarding sulfur compounds basically what are the sulfur sources available in our um, earth that we need to know like from where sulfurs are coming so there are basically three sources right so one is your mineral source minerals then min among minerals what are the minerals generally we get mainly fe s2 iron sulfide then some uh, sulfates like gypsum we all know that is calcium so4 dot 7 h2 then some organic sulfur also so these are the mineral sources then there is one more that is uh, your gaseous sources gaseous sources so like h2s hydrogen sulfide this is obtained in natural gas then so2 so3 then h2so4 gaseous and whenever these are dissolved in water this all the gases dissolved in water in h2 then those will be aqueous sources okay these all gases can be dissolved in h2 and those can be solved as a aqueous sources of sulfur then how do we do we produce sulfur from this elemental from this natural sources like uh, minerals and uh, gases obtained in our nature how do we extract sulfur from there um, from those those we need to know so and then 
the uses so first we'll discuss how do we extract how do we get from h2s mainly we can get sulfur h2s by reacting h2s with our atmospheric oxygen then we can get is two plus H two then H two S can be can 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 react with SO two also like already present sulfur dioxide in the gas in the like uh, atmosphere and it can give S eight this is the stable sulfur for Okay, then the produced sulfur uh, mainly we use for production of sulfuric acid. Almost 85 to 95 percent will be used for the production of sulfuric acid. Then uh, for the production of some other sulfur containing compounds like SO2, CS2, thiosulfates then production of some sulfur containing dyes, fertilizers, then vulcanization of rubber means rubber are long chain polymers in between two chains we can link sulfur unit that is called vulcanization then its strength will be enhanced so vulcanization of rubbers in vulcanization of rubbers we use sulfur so how do we produce this uh, sulfur dioxide uh, and uh, other sulfur containing compounds from sulfur those also we need to know like we can write the reactions SO2 then followed by oxidation of this SO2 will give SO3 then SO3 the reaction of H2O will produce sulfuric acid okay H2 this is actually in sulfuric acid dissolved in sulfuric acid when sulfuric acid dissolved in H2O will react with sulfur trioxide to yield um, sulfuric acid okay so here are some conditions reaction conditions needed like for production of SO2 2 from SA to oxygen it needs some temperature so separately we can write down the reactions this is the overall reaction then here some temperature is needed like we will melt this sulfur first and then this oxygen 
is oxygen will be uh, reacting with that molten sulfur to produce sulfur dioxide so to melt sulfur we need 140 around 140 degree to 150 degree centigrade sulfur is having melting point uh, around 110 degree centigrade but at this temperature the viscosity of molten sulfur will be the least so we will increase our temperature little more than the melting point of sulfur and then we will react it with uh, atmospheric oxygen this oxygen should be dry enough to produce sulfur dioxide if it contains some moisture then it will yield sulfuric acid like if our goal is to produce sulfur dioxide only so this oxygen should be moisture free then um, uh, after that so uh, uh, these are the reaction conditions and some pressure also needed pressure will be pressure will be your uh, 2.5 to 3.0 omega pascal around pressure will be not that much actually pressure will be some atm unit that is normal atmospheric pressure pressure is not that much needed but temperature is needed then it is very much highly exothermic reaction actually where delta h will be negative 2 minus 297 kilojoule per mole so highly heat emitting reaction then for sulfur dioxide to sulfur trioxide oxidation plus half O2 it will give sulfur trioxide this is also exothermic reaction where the delta is value is minus 99 Okay. and here we will maintain the temperature around 450 degrees centigrade this is just to increase the reaction kinetics this much high temperature is needed around 450 degrees centigrade and the pressure needed is 1 to 2 atm pressure in presence of vanadium pentoxide catalyst okay vanadium pentoxide V2O5 this is then so how does then it the yield will be reaction yield will be greater than 95 degree 95 percent okay this much high yield is obtained if we provide high temperature and this much pressure then vanadium pentoxide how, why does it need because it will produce this oxygen oxygen source vanadium pentoxide this is present in plus 5 oxidation state this vanadium then this one can be converted to VO2 2 VO2 leaving minus half O2 right and then 
this one again can be converted to v2 of 5 by addition of r o 2 that is called catalyst regeneration so this o2 will be this o2 will be utilized here okay so vanadium pentoxide is acting as an uh, as a catalyst here okay then coming to the first question combustion of so these are the like uh, what we have discussed we have discussed how sulfur we produce from our natural sources like h2s reaction of h2s and then its uses and then production of some uh, the, the major compound that is sulfuric acid uh, by uh, by the oxidation of elemental sulfur to sulfur dioxide then to sulfur trioxide and finally reaction with water after this combustion of sulfur to sulfur dioxide is an uh, which reaction exothermic endothermic adiabatic none of them as we have just now discussed combustion of sulfur to sulfur dioxide is a, is a highly exothermic reaction so correct option is exothermic combustion of sulfur to sulfur dioxide it is carried out industrially in one combustion chamber here we will use a molten sulfur in uh, liquid spray burner and then dry air as the oxidizing agent as i have written uh, i have already mentioned like s8 1 by 8 s8 plus o2 then after that so2 and delta h delta h will be minus minus 297 kilojoule per mole then we need to maintain the temperature around 140 to 150 degree centigrade this will be molten taken in spray burners And this is atmospheric dry dry air and dry air it should be it should not contain any moisture that is that moisture will react with this SO2 and uh, finally will produce sulfuric acid okay so this in this way the sulfur dioxide produced as we all know it can react with the atmospheric moisture and then it can uh, actually produce the acid rain okay because because of the production of sulfuric acid uh, so for desulfurization from the in, in, in industries like the emitted gases we should uh, desulfurize them otherwise those can react with the atmospheric moisture and can lead to acid rain so for desulfurization what we generally do desulfurization we will react this so2 with calcium oxide this will produce calcium sulfide initially followed by oxidation to produce gypsum calcium sulfate a very stable compound and then this calcium sulfate will be solid and trapped 
is a chamber so the emitted gas will not contain any sulfur to create acid rain pollution okay moving to the next question which procedure is followed to produce high purity sulfur Oswald process fresh process Heber process none of the above so the correct answer is fresh process Oswald Oswald process is basically to produce nitric acid then Heber Bosch Heber process is for production of your ammonia and fresh process is for production of sulfur okay So it is a method to extract sulfur from the underground underground deposits uh, where we will recover the sulfur from the elemental deposits. How we will do that I will explain in one scheme like this some instrument is there where uh, like actually the elemental sulfur uh, has been deposited in our earth crust in our earth crust like this uh, where it is surrounded by two non-porous channels and in between two non-porous channel there is one porous channel where this actually sulfur has been trapped uh, by like uh, the reaction of some uh, um, of, of some bacteria the atmospheric uh, hydrogen sulfide gas will be converted to some sulfate or uh, you can say some um, elemental sulfur form and uh, it will be deposited in this layer so this layer is porous but uh, it is surrounded by two non-porous layers then how we will extract sulfur from here like this one channel has been met where actually three uh, tubes has been inserted okay the construction of this machine actually um, consists three concentric tubes like all the three three tubes have the same center that is why these, these are three concentric tubes this is the outermost tube this is the middle tube and this is the innermost tube then through this outermost tube it is written through this outermost tube the superheated water is pumped into the sulfur deposit and then the sulfur melts and then it will be liquid it will be uplifted then and it is this fresh process is able to produce high purity sulfur also so how does it work liquid uh, like um, superheated water having temperature around or 165 degree centigrade will be pumped in then that temperature will melt this elemental sulfur present in this layer barren rock anhydride this is the anhydride porous non-porous layer and this is the like sulfur layer here sulfur will be melted then that molten sulfur will be liquid but that is like not that much uh, light enough to um, to uh, automatically uh, rise up so we need to like uh, we need to apply some force to rise it up what we will do then we will insert some um, some hot air uh, so, so some some hot, hot uh, air okay water like uh, hot hot steam we will insert and then uh, through that hot air insertion it will become frothy this this sulfur sulfur will become frothy and its uh, density will be lesser and then it will be pushed up like this this machine works then uh, what uh, happens after that this sulfur will be pushed up through this middle tube and uh, through this innermost tube actually the hot air has been passed to make it frothy then by this way actually very much pure sulfur has been extracted uh, 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 around 99.8 percent pure sulfur so so this fresh process consists of three concentric tubes right
three concentric tubes. Hot air, hot water. is pumped in to the outer most tube having 165 around 165 degree centigrade temperature then elemental sulfur melts then to decrease its viscosity highly viscous this is actually highly viscous It has melting point of 115 degree centigrade. Then inner through inner most. This is actually elemental sulfur will be melting and pushed up through the middle tube okay and through the innermost tube as we can see through this innermost tube hot air innermost tube hot air is passed then liquid sulfur will be frothy density will be decreased it will be pushed up through the middle tube okay then what are the cost associated in this process this is little costly process because here actually the superheated amount of superheated water needed is very large around th like 40 into the power 6 cc cubic centimeter superheated water so cost will be superheated water per 1 ton ok 1 ton sulfur then almost pure sulfur has been extracted almost pure Percent ninety nine point eight percent pure sulfur has been extracted by this process. Okay, so 
so this is the fresh process details then the next question is about uh, reaction of elemental sulfur with chlorine what will be the major product s8 when it reacts with chlorine gas what will be the major product uh, s2cl2 or so2 or scl2 so the correct answer will be h2cl2 right and in this uh, process scl2 like uh, disulfur dichloride will be the major product but along with disulfur dichloride sulfur dichloride only scl2 uh, will also be the minor product but this scl2 we can convert it back to h2cl2 by addition of excess sulfur so the reaction is s8 plus 4 cl2 4 s2 cl2 temperature needed is 240 degree centigrade okay this is also exothermic reaction delta h will be minus 58.2 kilojoule per mole then this is to cl2 presence of excess chlorine gas and in presence of some iodine catalyst also will give rise to 2 SCL2 but this can be converted to H2CL2 in presence of excess sulfur okay excess is it And this is high temperature reaction, but this uh, is to cl2 actually this SCL2 production will be the low temperature reaction. And uh, as we have discussed, like this, these are interconvertible. So we will finally lead to H2Cl2 on, uh, as the only product in presence of excess sulfur, excess elemental sulfur. So this one we should take as excess this one as excess we should take then only only one product we will get this product we will get then this h2cl2 has several applications actually this is a very important sulfur compound uh, first we will see what is the structure of h2cl2 it looks very interesting like h2o2 structure open book structure where the angle between two planes two planes of uh, CLSS containing one CLSS and another SSCL these two planes will be at an angle of 85.2 degree centigrade so almost perpendicular these both planes are and uh, yeah so this is and, and also the angle between chlorine sulfur sulfur that is also almost uh, sp3 angle that is 107.7 degree centigrade distance between two sulfur is 195 picometer distance between these two at, uh, atoms sulfur and chlorine is 206 picometer so what are the uses of sulfur disulfur dichloride is for production of some other sulfur containing compounds like sulfur chlorine dichloride uh, thiosulfur thio uh, compounds like uh, socl2 etc and uh, this this will have some other applications actually and also this uh, disulfur dichloride can be used as good sulfur sulfur like um, sulfurization agent sulfonating agent okay and also it can uh, behave as chlorinating agent also okay catalyst for chlorination it, it can provide chlorine source it can provide sulfur source also it can provide uh, chlorine source also then for hardening of soft woods also then uh, for your vulcanization 
as we we have already discussed like vulcanization means sulfur linkage in between two uh, long aliphatic chain so vulcanization also it can lead to like by by providing sulfur source then manufacture ma manufacturing of sulfur dyes and insecticides and rubbers etc and with polyols as, as polymerization catalyst for vegetable oils these are the basic uses of our uh, sulfur uh, disulfur dichloride then we will discuss regarding this uh, thio uh, like thiosulfur thiol thiol uh, production okay this SOCl2 how does it produce that is actually by the reaction of sulfur dioxide plus sulfur dichloride plus chlorine gas it can produce to associate it can be produced in some another uh, in some other ways also like by the reaction of sulfur trichloride plus 2SCl2 plus chlorine gas then 3 yeah then from uh, from your di sulfur dichloride also like this are sulfur dioxide and sulfur trioxide reaction with sulfur dichloride then this both can react with disulfur dichloride also so 2 plus s 2 cl 2 plus So CL2 okay. Hmm. Then SO3 plus S2 CL2 plus CL2 This can also produce SO CL2. So all are gas phase reaction okay. And why this SOCL2 is very important compound that we will discuss in upcoming questions then next question is which of the following is a super acid HBA4 HSO3F H2SO4 now the so the uh, correct answer is actually HSO3F that is fluorosulfonic acid now what does it mean by super acid super acids are the acids which are actually stronger than 100% concentrated sulfuric acid that means it is more acidic than sulfuric acid now the combination of HSO3F that is fluorosulfonic acid and the Lewis acid antimony pentafluoride produces magic acid which is far stronger protonating agent than only sulfuric acid uh, and this uh, strength of its acidity can be measured by hamlet acidity function that has the value of minus 23 compared to minus 12 of sulfuric acid so what does uh, this hamlet acidity function means hamlet acidity function is denoted by H O this has some representation this H O is equals to P K P H plus plus log of concentration 
concentration of B divided by concentration of BH plus okay so this looks similar to analogous to analogous to which equation the conventional pH representation equation that is Henderson Hasselbalch equation Henderson equation for pH so we can say this is an extension and this H0 will always have some negative value ok so more negative H0 acidity as acidity will be sorry, as acidity will be more H0 H0 will be more negative H0 will decrease so this we can say H0 is an extension of pH scale negative range right where pk as we all know p means the negative logarithm pk bh plus means minus log of minus log of kbh plus Okay, B is weak base weak base and B H plus is strong conjugate acid conjugate acid okay then so the Hamet acidity function values for this one H2SO4 this one is minus 12 and our super acid that is H3 actually the structure of this one will be like this fluorosulfuric acid right so H sulfur double bonded O then
fluorine all right so it has plus 6 oxidation state then antimony pentafluoride that will be sb This is called this magic acid. This combination is known as magic acid in 1 is to 1 ratio. And then how do you produce this fluorosulfonic acid? That is by the reaction of HF hydrofluoric acid in uh, then that will be liquid and uh, reaction of hydrofluoric acid with SO3 sulfur trioxide okay so liquid plus SO3 this will be dissolved in H This will be dissolved in HFSO3. In HFSO3. This will produce HFSO3. Now this hamate acidity function of uh, magic acid is very high minus 23 minus 12 for sulfuric acid for nitric acid H not nitric acid this is the parchloric acid HClO4 it is minus 15 and the most like the strongest acid known so far is fluoroantimonic acid. That is having minus 28 hematacidity acidity function value. Fluoroantimonic acid is a combination of the strongest acid. This one. Fluoroantimonic acid is a combination of hydrogen fluoride H Oops. F2 plus SP F6 Okay, this is fluorantimonic acid, and then this is the hammer acidity function. Now, some reactions of this magic acid, as this is very strong acid, this can some uses. This can serve as a very good protonating source, protonating uh, like uh, yeah, protonation source. Uses of magic acid.
first it can stabilize some carbocation stabilize carbo cations now carbocations can be classical and non classical also classical means trivalent and non classical means pentavalent right for example classical carbocations alcohol then super acid sorry magic acid sweeten then from this one also if you apply so uh, magic acid so here yeah, positive charge followed by H H minus migration Lead to finally this carbocation. Okay. Then non classical, some example of non classical pentavalent carbocations like super acid. then this positive charge can be formed here also can be migrated to here also okay Like not this one actually, hydrogen transport. Then I can represent this as I can represent this carbocation as this one so it can stabilize all these carbocations in the reaction medium then it can act as protonating agent also like protonating Protonating agents for alkenes. Like CH4, methane also it can protonate, even methane. Okay.
which is very mild base okay that also can be protonated CH5 plus then it will be decomposed to CH3 plus plus hydrogen then this CH3 plus can react to another methane molecule to produce CH2 H7 plus followed by decomposition to C H C2 H5 plus and then finally here, here H2 is evolved finally proton source will be eliminated will be converted to alkene C2H4 so these are the uses of our magic acid fluoro fluoro antimonic acid and uh, SPX F6 right fluoro antimonic acid and pent uh, anti uh, sorry fluoro sulfonic acid and antimony penta fluoride then moving to the next question which of the following can be used in manufacturing antibacterial and disinfecting agents chlorosulfonic acid benzoic acid pcl5 none of them the correct answer is chlorosulfonic acid why because it is the acid of uh, chlor chlorinated acid of sulfonic acid uh, with the formula hso3 cl when sulfonic acid reacts with chlorine it produces chlorosulfonic acid it is a distillable colorless liquid which is hygroscopic it is used in the manufacturing of antibacterial disinfecting agents synthetic sweeteners like saccharine foam plastic certain types of dis uh, de detergents and dyes also it is used in organic synthesis and sulfonation of long chain aliphatic alcohols it is a very powerful like lacrimator lacrimator means uh, like the tear uh, tear gas agent Lac um, lacrima and uh, this is the latin word lacrima that means tears actually so lacrimator means tear inducing agent it can be used as a very much powerful tear inducing agent in, in tear gas basically this chlorosulfonic acid uh, is used then moving to the next question uh, so how to produce this chlorosulfonic acid that is by as here it is written the reaction of sulfonic acid with chlorine so sulfonic acid means liquid so 3 sulfonic acid with chlorine also we can uh, react or uh, we can react like sulfonic acid h2 so3 plus cl2 this one also or liquid so3 in HCl okay both will produce HSO3 CL then which among the following is used for etching glass HSO3F HCl SOCl2 HBF4 correct answer is A HSO3F fluorosulfonic acid so etching of glass means Mm, means a, a process of making some art by the corrosive reaction of some acid or bases on 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 some uh, surface like for example here this on the surface of glass so the by by corrosive action of some acid we are making some art on glass because HSO3F fluorosulfonic acid is a very powerful um, uh, acid so it it can corrode the glass sulfate very effectively which is useful for etching of lead glass so this is how it looks etching of glass to make some art on glass surface so we will use fluorosulfonic acid then which of the following compounds of sulfur has the minimum oxidation state here 
uh, H like SO2 Cl2 H2SO4 SOCl2 and H2SO5 so which will be the correct answer correct answer will be C SOCl2 Cl2 because in all of uh, all, all all of the others so S is having plus 6 oxidation state like here 2 oxygen minus 2 and 2 chlorine minus 1 so S will be having plus 6 oxidation state here also 4 oxygen means minus 8 and 2 hydrogen means plus 2 so uh, altogether plus 6 it is giving you will be knowing right how to calculate this oxidation state I will show for one x plus like for this compound okay for example oxidation state of sulfur is x plus oxygen is minus 2 into 2 plus chlorine is minus 2 into sorry chlorine is minus 1 into 2 equals to this compound is having no charge so 0 charge so x minus 4 minus 2 equals to 0 so x minus 6 equals to 0 so x equals to plus 6 like this oxidation state has been calculated then here also in the same way minus 8 plus 2 so minus 6 x minus 6 equals to 0 so x equals to plus 6 here also the structure of h2so5 if we see it is it looks like this So this will also have minus 1, minus 1 and minus 2, minus 2. So all together minus 6. X minus 6 equals to 0. So plus 6 oxidation state. Only here uh, X plus X minus 2, minus 2 equals to 0. Because minus 1 into 2 equals to minus 2. So X minus 4 equals to 0. So X will be plus 4 oxidation state of plus 4 in all other compounds in all other compounds it has oxidation state of plus 6 so the correct answer will be SO2 Cl2 this one then the next question is what does aluminum phosphide produce while working as fumigant fumigant means which will act as uh, as a disinfectant as a disinfectant by producing some fumes right so what fume it it does produce that is the correct answer is phosphine because aluminum phosphide as we all know compound is alp denoted by alp that can react is it is a very highly toxic inorganic compound when it is exposed to air then it will react with the moisture present in the air and uh, like it will react it is available as pellet form or tablet form it will react with the moisture present in air to produce hydrogen phosphide or commonly known as phosphine gas the chemical properties of hydrogen phosphide uh, will make it um, a, a great fumigant because this is like phosphine is an organophosphate compound so alp plus h Two then a o h o three plus plus pH 3 okay. after that 
it can react like this also to help me 6H2 Phosphine gas will be produced. How we will produce aluminium phosphide? That is by elemental reaction of reaction of elemental aluminium with elemental red phosphate. Al plus B four. Four Al plus B four will produce four Al B. Right. Then this phosphine, phosphine gas produced, it is basically organophosphate. denoted as OPP organophosphate so this will damage the neurotransmitters uh, acetylcholine esterase enzyme okay acetylcholine esterase is an enzyme that is responsible for the hydrolysis catalytic hydrolysis of acetylcholine enzyme i have discussed this acetylcholine esterase enzyme how does it work and in presence of opp how its uh, function has been uh, um, disrupted in in the previous class of phosphorus compounds so here um, uh, to say briefly this organophosphate compounds basically will bind the active site of acetylcholine esterase enzyme and then this enzyme will in, uh, will be inhibited it. so it cannot participate in its catalytic function then uh, the conversion of acetylcholine to thiocholine by hydrolysis of acetylcholine will be um, hindered because without the acetylcholine esterase enzyme it cannot be easily hydrolyzed acetylcholine substrate cannot be easily um, uh, like hydrolyzed to produce thiocholine now um, so there, there will be excess accumulation of acetylcholine neurotransmitter so this acetylcholine actually um, uh, will produce the thiocholine which will act as the neurotransmitter now if uh, there is an excess ac accumulation of acetylcholine so it will disrupt the normal neurological function in in the body okay so um, the nervous system will fail down so that is the basic mechanism how this phosphine gas react as uh, as a disinfectant uh, if, if it is applied uh, to the uh, like uh, infections like bacteria or some fungus if it is applied if human body also consumes this phosphine gas that is toxic for us also because it can bind with acetylcholine and acetylcholine substrate present in our body also so this is highly toxic substance for any any living body then moving to the next question which nickel phosphide can be produced by hydrothermal reaction Ni2P, Ni2LP5, both A and B, none of the above. So correct answer is both Ni2P and Ni2LP5. So this is uh, this is one like uh, specific reaction uh, produced by hydrothermal process. Okay, where nickel chlorine, uh, nickel chloride hexahydrate and red phosphorus will be reacted together at high temperature like 200 degree centigrade for some specific duration to produce two specific compounds like for Ni. 2p it will be reacted for 24 hours and then if it is allowed to react for another more and another uh, 24 hours so totally 48 hours it will produce this ni12p5 uh, the details is available in this journal you can go through this one 
So hexathermal hydrothermal reactions will produce nickel phosphide, um, which will be crystallized in pure form and having this these symbols Ni2P and Ni12P5. And this is basically synthesized through solid state reaction between this nickel chloride hexahydrate and red phosphorus at 200 degree centigrade means inside autoclave for certain duration like 24 hours and 48 hours respectively. Then some more sulfide compound, sulfide compound right, uh, sodium sulfide. It is used in photographing in industry, textile industry, food in industry, all of them. Correct answer is all of them. Sodium sulfide is very important compound having this chemical formula in it so 3 It is a basically reducing agent, okay? And it can be used in production of some other sulfides like disulfide. Na2S2O3. This is called thiosulfate, right? Na2S2O3, sodium thiosulfate. It is an oxidation prevent, prevention agent also because uh, it will capture the oxygen by its reducing property. So, it is an oxidation prevention agent uh, for developer solution in photographic industries. It is an anti-chlorination agent also, like chlorine also it can capture. In paper and textile industries, it can preserve food from oxidation and also it can be used for the treatment of boiler water in food industries as it is an oxygen scavenger to protect the system from heating corrosion. Okay. So how does it is produced in two 2 o 3 that is by the reaction of SO2 with caustic soda NOH at 60 degree 80 degree centigrade temperature then na 2 so 3 will be produced. You can write in the next slide actually. And it is a three along with water. Then the, if this NH2SO3 is allowed to react with excess SO2, like this SO2 is taken in excess, then it will produce disulfide NH2S2O5. Okay, this is called disulfide. Disulfide. Or it can be produced, Na2SO3 can be produced by reaction of Na2CO3 also. Same reaction. Na2SO3 plus CO2. Then this Na2SO3 can be used for production of one important compound that is sodium thiosulfate. How? By the reaction of elemental sulfur. Na2SO3 plus S plus some water. So at 50 degree. Centigrade temperature to actually not air fine water will be centigrade is two or three. Then it will capture 5H2 leading to
so this is we and this is used as fixing agent in photography industries so these are the important uses and production schemes of our sulfur compounds so, if you have any question you are welcome anyone is having any question since there is no question so i will close the session for today in the upcoming session we will discuss some other important inorganic materials okay thank you all